very much. I'm excited to be here. Democrats are on the move. Two weeks ago, the President of the United States canceled student loan debt for tens of millions of Americans. 20 million Americans woke up on Thursday of that week without student loan debt for the first time in their adult lives. Another 23 million Americans saw their debt load significantly reduced. I want to say As House Democrats brace for a potential leadership shakeup, if they lose power this fall, Schumer and his team are getting back to work in Congress. All four top Senate Democratic leaders, including Schumer, are preparing to run again for their current post. According to multiple senators and aides, Senate Democrats are in contention to hold the Senate, and Schumer thinks they might even pick up seats. It's a clear contrast with the House, where Democrats are fighting long odds in their bid to keep the chamber. Over in House Representatives, Nancy Pelosi is receiving a lot of criticism. House Republicans are, mandating, are demanding that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi stand up to President Biden about his order to cancel up to $20,000 in student loan debt. It comes after she argued a year ago that the President does not have the authority to implement student loan forgiveness without the approval of Congress. And if the Fed does continue down its rate hiking path, it can make matters worse. That's because higher rates mean $38 trillion in government debt becomes more costly to finance. As the Fed has raised benchmark interest rates by 2.5% percentage points this year. Treasury secretaries, the treasury interest rates have soared in the second quarter the interest paid on the total debt was a record $599 billion on a seasonally adjusted annual rate. In his remarks, Powell said the Fed is doing all it can to avoid a scenario similar to 1960s and 70s when surging government spending coupled with a Fed unwilling to sustain higher interest rates led to years of slow growth and rising inflation. Lawmakers in Congress have big plans this week. Joe Biden is set to make a very important announcement that will affect millions of Americans. And now, the president plans to deliver a primetime speech this week, returning to the core message of his 2020 campaign. It comes as Americans are getting ready to vote in the November midterms. A White House official said Thursday's address would focus on the continued battle for the soul of the nation and show how the president sees the central argument of his 2020 candidacy remains as important as ever, with the midterm elections coming to clear focus. According to the White House, the president will lay out how America's standing in the world and its democracy are at stake. And over the past two years, Biden will highlight what he sees as progress. A very special thank you to my partner in this, Senator Schumer, who has been a leader who has fought this fight, and also Senator Warnock, who has been absolutely relentless, as all three of us have spoken with the White House, have spoken publicly, have pushed to get this across the finish line. It matters so much to so many working people across this country. 40% of those getting help do not have a college diploma. The unions were behind it. This was ultimately the Democrats doing what Democrats do best, helping working people. The week before that, uh, the work that I've done for a long time with the administration meant that the FDA finally put out the rules so that the cost of hearing aids will go down. Uh, by mid-October, hearing aids are going to be available over the counter. For the 20 million people with hearing loss, only about one out of five who can afford to get hearing aids, this will be life-changing. Uh, and the week before that, we got the Inflation Reduction Act through. A commitment to a 40 percent reduction in carbon emissions in less than eight years, paid for by our 15 uh, uh, percent minimum tax on billionaire corporations. Before that, it was chips, it was science, it was guns. This is about Democrats who are on the move. But we still have work to do. It is absolutely critical that we have a judiciary that actually follows the law. And what we will be doing this month and on through the rest of this year is getting as many. Thank you. Thank you to my colleagues and hello to all of you. It's great to see you again. It feels sort of like the second day back at school. I want to just bring your attention briefly to some of the accomplishments of the Inflation Reduction Act for Americans. This is going to be putting us in a position to lead on innovation and development for clean energy and the clean energy transition, saving money for consumers and delivering on our commitments to take bold action on the climate emergency. And we are already seeing firms race to develop projects to build out clean energy and green technology. 
a lithium processing factory facility in Tennessee, which will help to break our dependence on these uh, critical supply chains with unfriendly and sometimes hostile countries. Another example is Senator Schumer said First Solar, which has announced that it will be investing $1.2 billion to build out a new solar manufacturing facility in the United States. Now, analysts are telling us that this will result in hundreds of billions of dollars in private investment that will create hundreds of thousands of new jobs. And this money has been waiting on the sidelines for this law to get passed, and now that we have gotten it done, it's going to be into action, too. I want to just note that when I was home in Minnesota in August, I heard firsthand from people who appreciate the benefit of this and are excited to, what, excited to hear about what this might mean for their community. Here's just one last example. In Becker, Minnesota, the Sherco coal-fired plant. This is a plant that is... Heat wave in that state. It's quite uh, clear that climate crisis is here. This extreme weather is impacting the air that, that we breathe. Currently, there are nearly 70 wildfires burning across this country. Uh, well, along with the destruction that wildfires bring, the smoke they release contains particulate matter and other air pollutants that pose a threat to human health. Smoke doesn't uh, just threaten nearby communities, but also downwind communities as well. We know that smoke from wildfires in the West has reached as far as our states uh, here on the, the East Coast. Uh, some people say that we're at the end of America's tailpipe. And some days I uh, fully agree with uh, with that. As these wildfires have become more frequent and severe, so do the emissions that they create. The health risks that, uh, from exposures to this pollution are even greater for disadvantaged communities, including rural communities, which are often more vulnerable to wildfires than the resulting air pollution. That's why we've made mitigating the climate and health risks from wildfires eligible for funding under our environmental and climate justice block grants program and the Inflation Reduction Act. This new program provides $3 billion in grants and technical assistance for mitigating environmental issues in disadvantaged communities. And that brings me to Senator Merkley's two pieces of legislation that we're considering today, along with several others. The Smoke Ready Communities Act would create a grant program to support communities in preparing for and responding to the potential health risks from harmful air emissions uh, that emanate from wildfires. The Smoke Planning and Research Act would support community planning and research activities on the effect, effects of uh, smoke emissions from wildfires on human health. I look forward to hearing more about these bills shortly from Senator Markley and our witnesses. Before we do, however, let me turn to another piece of legislation that we're going to examine today, and that is re the Recognizing the Protection of Motor Sports Act, also known as RPM Act. 